What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day one of 100 of Onshape. This uh, tutorial series of 100 Days of Onshape is going to be for students or teachers, or professionals, or whatever, who have no clue how to use a 3D modeling system. And then you can follow me step by step as I learn how to use Onshape and just share you some things I've found. Now, this won't cover every little B, uh, piece and part of Onshape, but it'll cover the things that a student, kind of a first year engineering student might need for whatever reason. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have each video be about 10 minutes in length, kind of going in depth over one particular part of or one aspect of Onshape. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started on our very first part. So what we got here is just two simple extrusions. And so what you think about an extrusion is, um, kind of think of those Play-Doh, old school Play-Doh presses where uh, Play-Doh would extrude out of a certain shape. And so what we're gonna do here is we're going to learn how to navigate through the environment and how to do some shortcuts. So what you're gonna find is I have Part Studio 1 right here. I'm gonna click on this plus sign and uh, create another part. That way, within one file, I've got the part that we're going to look for and we're going to try to model it again and then show you how to start from scratch. So before we get there though, what does this environment? So when you log on for Onshape for the first time, you're going to be kind of in this environment. And what you're going to click on is create and then document. And so document allows you to create parts, assemblies, and then so on and so forth all in one file. So, but I've already got this extrude and cut part already made. So let's go ahead and go back in there. So what you should click is create document and then you should see something very similar to what I see here. All right, and now what are we gonna do first? The first thing we're gonna do is gonna click on sketch. So a sketch allows you to take um, a plane and we're gonna talk about these three planes in a second, but allows you to draw a two dimensional geometry on that plane. For right now, it doesn't matter which plane we choose, but they're denoted and on shape as front, right and top. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the front. Now you see it's sketch one right here is denoted on this front plane, but I'm not necessarily viewing the front plane straight on. So what I want you to get used to do is after you start a sketch, go ahead and click on the top right, that view cube of what plane you're working on. That way, when you're doing the geometry, it looks straight on, not near as confusing. All right, the next thing that I know students are going to do is they're going to want to click exit out of here because they just love screen real estate. They just want to take up as and clean everything out of there. You have to keep this up while your sketch is active. So you don't want to touch that at all. What we're going to find out is as we do features and we pull these up, that those commands found within that feature are going to pop up right here. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to pick and we're going to draw a square. Now you can click on center point rectangle right here, or what we're gonna do instead is, what I prefer to do is keep your left hand on the keyboard, and my pinky is hovering over the escape key. I hit escape frequently because as you're doing stuff, you find out that you're accidentally clicked on something and, or something's not working, so I hit escape frequently. And instead of hitting, uh, clicking this for a rectangle, I'm gonna click R on my keyboard and this allows me to go ahead and draw a center point rectangle, which I found to be a little more helpful. If you click on this rectangle right here, you'll, uh, you'll get a corner rectangle. And so corner rectangles, you click on the two corners that you're going to draw from. The center point rectangle using the R key, I find to just be more helpful in general. Okay, and that's it. Well, that's where we've got a rectangle so far. If you draw something you don't really want to do, Control Z also works. So if I'm Control Z and get that rectangle out of there, and I'm going to draw hopefully a more square rectangle. I'm not going to do any dimensions yet. We're kind of just eyeballing it, and then we're going from there. We we'll go ahead, and then we can click the green check mark. We can be done with this sketch, and now we can do stuff with that sketch. And then what we're going to do for this one is we're going to extrude. So you can click on the extrude button, or you can hit Shift E. And this allows me to then take this 2D geometry and to put it in a three-dimensional plane. And so you can kind of continue to use the view cube and click around here on the front pieces and the bottom pieces. However, I find that to be not helpful sometimes because 
if you want to get to the front face, you got to you got to figure out how to, how to navigate. What is a whole lot easier that once you get used to holding down the right mouse wheel and then just orienting as you need to. Okay, that does take a little bit of practice, but holding down the right mouse wheel or sorry, right mouse clicker, um, and then if you hold down the mouse wheel, does it it moves right mouse wheel pans and allows you to orbit. So one thing I want you to get used to is kind of bouncing between using holding down the mouse wheel and the right mouse button to let you orient how you need to and kind of see what you got going on. If you ever get really, really, really lost, you can click on the front and I'll take you right back to the front and then you're good to go. Okay, so back to this extrusion. Let's go and work on this extrusion. So I've clicked extrude, but we haven't told Onshape what we're gonna extrude yet. And we're gonna extrude this sketch right here. By default, you see this little arrow pop up and you can drag that extrusion kind of as far as you want to. I'm gonna do about as best I can on making a cube. And then we're gonna then talk about what else can you do with this extrusion. So you can type in the dimensions right here. There's some other features that we'll get into later, but you can either drag and drop this arrow and pull back or forward as far as you want, or you can type in that dimension so if we went three inches and then we hit enter, we're okay. Click check and then we're good to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is now we're gonna do the same thing with the circle. So I'm gonna click on sketch. We're gonna do shift S, let's try that out. Shift S, click on, you can click on your three original planes or you can click on a surface you've created. So the surface we're gonna click on is the front of that cube. Now notice sketch two is right here, but we need to view it again. So we're gonna click on front I'm gonna hit C for circle on my keyboard. And then we're gonna draw a circle that is the same size in diameter as the length of that square. So we're gonna then click check mark and then we are good to go. You can see very faintly, I've got some geometry overlaying that cube. So now we're gonna extrude. We can click on extrude or shift E. Let's do shift E. And then so we can pick on some geometry. So we can either Click on the geometry that is outside of or the negative space of that circle, and you get in this preview state here. So say if I accidentally click on something I don't want to extrude. We can look at what is being extruded right here, and we can click out of those features. Or, let's try this, if I, can we deselect from here? No, it doesn't look like right now. So all I'm gonna do is, hit escape because things are looking ugly and then click extrude take this and then drag it on down you can drag again drag it as far as you want or just type in those dimensions either one totally works okay and then we click the check mark and then we are good to go we've officially made our first part in on shape this looks very similar to what we have here but you notice my planes are missing they're gone and so what we're going to do now is make those planes invisible or hide them and this just allows me to look at my part orient it rotate it around without having to look through those uh, planes where they might be in your way alrighty guys that'll be it for this video if you have any questions let me know I want you to get some good practice on extrusion and then also how to rotate so being able to rotate pretty easily and then also move pretty easily. So with the center mouse wheel, you can move. Right mouse clicker, you can rotate. Getting used to this does is a little bit irritating, but I promise you being able to do it quickly and well it will benefit you absolutely well as you're making your parts. Okay guys, that's it. If you have any questions, let me know and I will see you on the next video.